Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video we will cover if and how caffeine supplementation can be used to maximize muscle growth. First we need to explore what exactly caffeine is. Caffeine is a central nervous system stimulant, which means it increases nervous activity. Caffeine is a naturally occurring compound, which is found in products such as coffee, tea and cacao. Lifters and athletes often consume caffeine as a pre-workout or pre-training stimulant for its perceived benefits on a numerous array of physical exercise. In this video, we will explore if caffeine can be an effective supplement specifically to maximize muscle growth. First, let's discuss what direct effects caffeine has on hypertrophy. As far as I'm aware, we don't have any solid evidence looking at the effects of caffeine directly on muscle growth outcomes. So we can't really say conclusively that caffeine is either beneficial or inhibitory for hypertrophy gains. So rather than looking at the direct effects of caffeine, we need to look at how it may indirectly impact hypertrophy through other potential mechanisms. Luckily, we have plenty of research exploring the effects of caffeine on factors which may indirectly promote muscle growth. Let's now cover what these are and how they may influence long-term hypertrophy. The first and most obvious is the effects of caffeine on lifting performance. This meta-analysis concluded that pre-exercise caffeine consumption is able to enhance muscular endurance, maximal strength and power during resistance training. However, during hypertrophy style training, we aren't really concerned with 1RM strength or maximal power, we are more concerned with muscular endurance, which is the ability to repeat sub-maximal performance. So let's look into more detail about how caffeine affects hypertrophy style training routines specifically. This study explored the effects of caffeine intake on repeated sets to failure of bench press and leg press training at 80% 1RM. It was found that the lifters ingesting caffeine before training performed more repetitions across three sets compared with the placebo group. This research together suggests that caffeine intake is able to promote small but notable improvements in lifting performance with both maximal and submaximal loads. While this is not a direct measure of hypertrophy, it suggests that it may enhance the training stimulus to promote muscle growth. If trainees can perform more repetitions or more weight in their training sessions, it may provide a slightly superior training stimulus to adapt to. This may result in greater long-term muscle growth compared with training in a non-caffeinated state. The second indirect effect that caffeine can have on hypertrophy training is its effects on perceived effort. This study explored the effects of caffeine ingestion on perceived effort and pain during resistance training. Trainees performed a full body resistance training session, taking all sets to failure using 60% 1RM. It was found that in addition to improving lifting performance, pre-training caffeine reduced perceived exertion and decreased the perception of pain during training compared with the placebo. Once again, this is not a direct measure of hypertrophy, but this study suggests that caffeine may reduce perceived effort of training. This may allow us to push slightly harder with each set, resulting in slightly superior lifting performance with the same overall effort. As we mentioned, this may provide a more hypertrophic stimulus and result in greater long-term muscle growth. Another potential indirect influence of caffeine on hypertrophy is its effects on alertness and concentration during our training sessions. This study explored the effects of caffeine intake on cognitive performance during exhaustive exercise. Subjects completed a two and a half hour cycling protocol and completed various non-specific cognitive tests during and after the exercise session. It was found that pre-exercise caffeine consumption resulted in superior cycling performance and cognitive performance during the exhaustive exercise. While this is quite a large extrapolation, this study suggests that caffeine intake could potentially improve our effort and concentration during resistance training sessions, especially for hypertrophy training, which requires high volumes of submaximal lifting. This could potentially be beneficial for muscle growth. Caffeine may help us focus on technique and maximize intent of each set, especially towards the end of high volume workouts. Once again, this may provide a superior hypertrophy stimulus and enhance the long-term muscle growth response. Another independent variable that caffeine can have an influence on is sleep. Because caffeine is a stimulant, it has the ability to influence fatigue and sleep. This can be used in both a positive and deleterious way, depending on how it is used. 
First, let's look at how this may inhibit sleep. Well, quite clearly, if we are highly caffeinated, our sleep quality and quantity is likely to be negatively affected. For example, this study explored the effects of caffeine use in professional rugby players during a competitive match in the evening. Although caffeine consumption may have had a performance enhancing effect, post-game caffeine saliva concentrations were still equally as high, if not greater, than pre-game caffeine levels. This resulted in an average 3.5 hour sleep delay and a 1.5 hour reduction of total sleep duration compared with a regular non-caffeinated sleep. While there are other competition related factors involved here, this study suggests that caffeine consumption close to our sleeping time is likely to inhibit our sleep quality and or quantity. Therefore, we should be cautious about how close to bed we consume this stimulant. So although nighttime caffeine intake is likely to inhibit sleep, it can also have the opposite effect if used wisely. If trainees have a poor night of sleep, completely unrelated to caffeine intake, then caffeine consumption during the early hours of the day is likely to reverse some of the fatigue associated with poor sleep. For example, this study explored the effects of resistance training in a sleep deprived state with or without caffeine ingestion. As expected, sleep deprivation resulted in inhibited rep performance, but caffeine ingestion was able to reverse these effects. As we can see in the black bars, sleep deprivation plus caffeine resulted in similar performance compared with training in a well-rested state with no caffeine, as shown by the grey dotted bars. This study suggests that if trainees are sleep deprived, caffeine ingestion may be a useful strategy to alleviate its negative performance effects. However, it should be noted that trainees shouldn't rely on caffeine to help them through a sleep deprived state. We should always try to ensure sleep is prioritized and only use extra caffeine when necessary. So now we understand that caffeine can certainly have some positive effects on physical and perceptual abilities, which are likely to enhance our training stimulus. Now we will explore how much caffeine should be consumed to see these positive effects. The first factor to consider here is body weight. Caffeine should always be consumed in proportion to body weight. So heavier individuals will require more caffeine to experience the same effect compared with lighter individuals. Most of the studies in the resistance training research use dosages of somewhere around 3 to 6 milligrams per kilogram of caffeine. To put these numbers into perspective, let's use an 80 kilogram individual. So let's say the middle of this range around 4.5 milligrams per kilogram for this individual equals around 360 milligrams total, which is equivalent to around 3 to 4 cups of coffee. So as we can see, the research generally uses very high doses of caffeine to see an ergogenic effect. However, a more realistic pre-workout dose would be something like one to two milligrams per kilogram, which will provide some benefits without the very high dosages. So to get the absolute most out of caffeine, we probably need to consume quite high dosages. However, this isn't always required, nor is it recommended, Rather, our dosage can change depending on how much it is needed. A more conservative dose of around 1 to 2 milligrams per kilogram is probably a more realistic pre-workout dose for most people. And higher doses can be used if the trainee is sleep deprived or they want to maximize performance for a specific training session. Another consideration for our caffeine dose is our habitual intake. It is often assumed that if we regularly consume caffeine throughout the day, then we will need higher dosages to see the ergogenic benefits. However, the research suggests that this may not be true. For example, this study explored the effects of caffeine ingestion on bench press performance in mild habitual caffeine users. It was found that pre-exercise caffeine ingestion improved power output and bar velocity during a 5x5 bench press session, just like we see with non-habituated caffeine intake. So although it may seem that regular caffeine intake may decrease your response, this doesn't seem to be the case. Trainees are still likely to see performance benefits from caffeine ingestion, even with regular consumption. Next, let's discuss caffeine timing. In other words, when should we consume our caffeine dose in relation to our training sessions? To understand this, let's look at the time frame of caffeine in our system after ingestion. This study explored the effects of caffeine ingestion in various different amounts and forms. As we can see in this graph, blood caffeine levels peaked somewhere around 45 minutes to two hours after ingestion and slowly diminished after this point. We can also see here that it took up to 15 plus hours 
for caffeine levels to return to baseline after ingestion. This can help to provide us with caffeine timing recommendations in relation to our workout and sleep. A general recommendation would be to consume your caffeine dose around 30 to 60 minutes pre-exercise to ensure peak caffeination during your training session. Furthermore, this suggests that we probably want to avoid caffeine ingestion too close to our sleep time, as we might risk having some of these stimulative effects of caffeine while trying to sleep. So to summarize this video, let's establish some practical recommendations. It seems that consuming a moderate dose of caffeine 30 to 60 minutes before a lifting session can improve our training quality. Caffeine can improve lifting performance, concentration in the gym, and decrease our perceived effort. Furthermore, trainees may want to increase their pre-workout caffeine dose if they are sleep deprived or particularly fatigued on a specific day to help them get through a training session. However, caffeine should be thought of as a short-term stimulant, not something to chronically rely on for every single session as a substitute for good quality sleep. Trainees should also be aware of caffeine ingestion in the later hours of the day. Consuming caffeine too close to our bedtime will likely inhibit quality and quantity of sleep. Therefore, if trainees are going to ingest caffeine before an evening training session, it should be a much lower dose than what would otherwise be consumed for an earlier session. Trainees can use these general guidelines to implement caffeine as a pre-workout supplement, however you choose, abilities which are likely to enhance our training stimulus. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Check out flowhighperformance.com for online coaching, training templates, ebooks and more.